They call it the spiritual home of football. Kweska Maminzela is in the heartland of Orlando, the Orlando Stadium. That's the backdrop here on Marawa TV and an exclusive conversation as well uh, that we are going to be having with uh, the chairman of Orlando Pirates at his home, the Orlando Stadium. Chairman Ivan Koza, good to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for the opportunity to be part of uh, the history of uh, Soweto, uh, where people with a state of hopelessness yes. they got hope in terms of uh, gaining courage in fighting for housing in Soweto when it started in 1932. It's a stadium that brings so many different memories as well. It's uh, what established back in 1959. Uh, they renovated it in 2008 ahead of the World Cup here. Yeah. But just the old days, uh, you were saying that that reminds you of the backdrop of the, the, the main grandstand, all the big games that, that Orlando Pirates had here, yeah, whether it was Sales House, Champ of Champs, Olsen's Challenge, uh, JPS Special. What, what actual memories of the old Orlando come to mind with you here? Uh, I think what is important is that, you know, <coughs> every game played here was packed yeah and uh, the atmosphere was just you know electric people walking on foot you know coming to the stadium there were a few cars mm -hmm. some coming by train because there was one railway line that was servicing the greater part you know of soweto and some coming from outside soweto especially george Koch. but the important thing is that you know people came early mm -hmm. Not what we see today, people come with 10 minutes before the game starts. People came early and every game was chock a block because that was the only entertainment mm -hmm. where you are able you know, to meet friends, where you are able to share your political views uh, undercover, mm -hmm. uh, where you are going to talk about you know, issues of social you know, problems, uh, housing, mm -hmm. uh, permit. Uh, because for you to qualify to be in Soweto, you have a special which was called you know, a 318. Uh, if you don't have that, you can't be in Johannesburg. Uh, you've been escorted, you know, to the rural areas. So this place, you know, was very spiritual home for a lot of people to gain courage, gain confidence, to renew relationship, but you feel protected mm. because the uh, people that were here they had all solutions uh, because of the different, you know, vocations uh, they were pursuing. When you look at Orlando and you look at it now and the kind of excitement that it brings uh, for the many fans that support Orlando Pirates, for you, is, is there that one thing that you still feel as Dr. Ivan Koza that you haven't accomplished around your club, around the ownership of the club, around the home of where the club belongs? One of them is that, you know, Orlando Pirates must own this stadium. Uh, because you know the history that it you know uh, captivates. Uh, I think you know we are appreciative of the up, uh, up, 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 upgrading that took place in the stadium, but it does not you know uh, capture the essence. Now Orlando Pirates was a team that made a statement because it was a multiracial uh, team then, and uh, by decree of the government, were forced to dismantle the team. You talk about the ownership of the stadium. What does it take when you have conversations around the potential of ownership here? What, what would it take for you to own it? Well, I understand the government position to say it must be multi-purpose stadiums yeah. for the community. Uh, we have evolved. We understand we can't be selfish, but we are catering for a certain section of the sport that requires personal attention in preparations and everything. Uh, but the things that you can't do because of the limitations uh, of the ownership because you need to get permission and the rating that goes with it is prohibitive in terms of your ambition that you want to make. Uh, right now we are about to launch uh, the Hall of Fame, even around here. So, but all that requires a lot of permission and permits uh, that you must get in making sure that you launch uh, that Hall of Fame because this stadium mm -hmm. has got a story to tell because as we are sitting here, it's a dumping area. Uh, that build is still out of the dumping area. Yeah. It's, it's amazing that you raise the issue around the Hall of Fame uh, because yours is one of the richest, 1937 till present. If that Hall of Fame, you were able to win that battle to have it here, would you track it from 1937 to present or is there a specific timeline of when you would want to capture it? 
From 1937. From 37. 1937 to And individual players as well that... We got almost all their pictures. Wow. Yes. And that museum or that secret stash that you have of the pictures of all the players that you have, how wide ranging are they? Um, when you say you've got all the pictures, would you say most of the individuals that played for Orlando Pirates since its inception? Uh, most of the individuals, it was one area where it was a, there, was a, there was a break. Yeah. Uh, but you know, in most of the eras that, you know, you know, because generation is so every 15 years talk about the generation mm. uh, that is evolving. So that kind of mix we have in the picture collection that we have with a lot of mm. the money. To tell those stories, let's say some of the players, I mean, we'll talk about individual players that have signed up now and those that you've let go of. But in, in terms of telling the players, this generation, the ones that are going to be playing this season, just the importance of what the significance of that jersey is. Do you step forward into the change room and tell the guys, these are the visuals. This is what Jerris Kosana did. This is what the Gavin Lanes, the Mark Fishers of that era were able to do. Is that something you take pride in doing or you try and emphasize it via the coaches? No, I don't do it via the coaches. Well, they, 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 they don't, they're not part of this club, you know. Uh, permanently. Permanently. Mm. Therefore, it's difficult for them to convey the message. It's a tradition with the club. They know that, you know, before the season starts, I must communicate with you. Today was meant mm. uh, for me to welcome everybody, especially the new ones, and they deal with the issues of induction, uh, the, the, what Paris represents mm. uh, in terms of you know uh, the tradition and what we expect of them, and how they're going to help us in improving the, 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 the history of this club. How, how many people are going to write the history of, of, of this club in terms of their contribution towards this club? So it's my responsibility mm. as chairman. Every year I do that with my players, I do it twice, twice a year uh, to make sure that I keep on reminding them what we represent as a club. It's not just a, a club, it's a movement. Mm. So that's why it's very important for us to understand. There was a stage when there were the happy people, but they were not winning trophies. But the kind of football they were playing uh, made a lot of people very proud to be associated with the Lando Pirates. Maybe we don't ask you enough as the chairman that when you watch the brand of football that has been played by the club at this current stage, does it bring a smile to your face? Well, I'm very much encouraged, right? yeah. I must tell you. I'm very much encouraged because <coughs> it, you know, captures, you know, the moment, the yeah. mood, uh, that, you know, we understand uh, what you used to produce in the state of hopelessness in this country yeah. in this years gone by. Yeah. That's what's very important. Why people are coming to the stadium, are coming for therapy. Yeah. Uh, it must be experiential kind of marketing, what you take home after the game. So it's yeah. very important that whatever you do as a player, but you we play for a win, but at the same time, how you win. Mm. That's what counts in our supporters, as we understand them. And that's why, as I speak now, I'm very much you know, uh, confident that uh, they are almost getting where I expect them to be. Uh, just opposing that with the performance of years that gone by, mm. the kind of players. And what we are struggling to get, Rob, is uh, personalities you know, in a team. Mm. Uh, they're in short supply all over the world. Mm. That's what is lacking in most of our teams. Uh, that you cannot even go in and secure in another team. Uh, you start, try to develop them. That's why with the MDC, we hope that that might be mm. the answer for us mm. to cultivate that kind of players that we need mm. to have for us to be able to sustain that kind of football that we're mm. expecting from my, my players. But what is the problem though? Is it, is it a coaching problem where they are structured? So you, you can't have somebody who does what Tujomo would be able to do back then or KK Son was able to do back in the days or uh, Toy Ramusa or anybody else who was very nimble on the ball brings the excitement on. We see it at, at, at games, uh, Alex, Zabo, my many Piri games and so on. You get those kind of players, but at this level, is it an instruction? Is it a coaching thing that the players cannot express themselves? Uh, it's not that, Rob. <coughs> The society has changed. Mm. Now, in the olden days, going to school, coming out from school, going home, you've got a tennis court. Mm. Uh, there's four part. Every given moment you go to any street, there's a four part. Yeah. Uh, there's a Wednesday, you know, uh, games, you know, at school, sports day. Now, the touches to on the, on the, on the, that football it creates that opportunity mm. uh, to fine tune your skills, your trapping, your passing, uh, your dribbling, uh, all other maneuvers that you used to get in the olden days, 
but that has been limited. Mm. Uh, players now uh, they just go to training after training is all you know. Mm. In the olden days, that's why this day is so important. I'll never forget when Joe Mosono got his first salary. In his first salary, he bought 12 football, uh, uh, footballs mm. to be able, you know, to train. He used to train three times a day. And after that, then he's go up and down the stairs in the grandstand yeah. outside alone. And that's why up to today, nobody can hit the banana kick like Joe yes. in, in the players that we have at the moment. Because he used to train. Mm. Uh, that was, that was those touches, that feeling of the of, of the skin, mm. it helped him to watch court. Now, the other day, uh, Kaiser says to me, you see what happened in the game of Juventus? He says, no, Kaiser. Mm. You remember Jama? Yes. What Jomo did in the center. We've been there before. <laughs> Nothing new. We've been there before. Mm. So you can imagine that it's only because of how many times he was touching the yeah. ball at any given time, which is lacking nowadays mm. in our players because they think when you finish training, Go on social media using your smartphone, which is the, the sign of the times. But hopefully, we might find some kind of substitute mm. to make sure that they go back to what we thought was a solution in fine tuning the skills mm. that we're hoping for. At times, it's a bit difficult to have to talk about a player who's had to retire at the age of 29. And that's exactly what happened in the week with brilliant Kuzwayo. What's your thoughts around that? It's uh, uh, tough for him as a player because he still wanted to play and for a goalkeeper, 29 is extremely young. It's really painful, uh, Rob, because I always say to players that you know, from age 18 to 20 to 30, that is the time you, you establish your legacy. Yeah. Uh, in a normal you know, situation, when you are 29, 30, in the normal industry, you are mature. Right. In football, you know, terms, you know, that's a different story altogether. These different goalkeepers can go until age 40, 45. Yes. But coming to what called the brilliant, I'm only comforted that, you know, the man is spiritual. Yeah. Uh, but that's not enough. I think he must be given a, a psychological support mm. to absorb the disappointment mm. uh, of being capacitated at this young age yeah. as a goalkeeper. It's unfortunate that you know we did not you know understand the magnitude mm. of the injury when we got him back. Because remember, Rob, we came in first in our development. Yes. And yeah. uh, interesting enough, we still have his back that he left behind when he scaled the fence and oh. went play for another team. <laughs> and uh, we kept that back as a memento. So when he came back, it was a homecoming of the lost son yeah. of another part of the football club. And hence, when he left. Uh, once and always separated mm. because he started here. Mm. Wanted to give him a chance because he thought maybe he needed a bit of a run. But literally, mm. we know that he's carrying an injury that is a bit challenging. Mm. That's why we never rushed him to play him. That's why he never fit in any of our games in the, in the Premier Division because wow. we're not sure about the injury. So it was only towards the this beginning of this year where we thought, man, this limb, let's try him in the MTC. But even then, it was not comfortable. Yeah. Until we went to the doctor to get the, the thorough, thorough MRI scan to be sure what is the extent of the damage. Mm. And the first you know, report was not you know, uh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Second report was not exciting. But the guy psychologically, because he's got the mental strength, felt, no, I can do it. Mm. But you could see there was a bit of a pain in terms of his balancing. But until such time, we said, went for the fourth what mm. kind of uh, scan. Again, it gave us a different result until we called this agent. Mm. We said, man, let's share a thought on this point. Mm. Uh, let us not damage him permanently. Mm. Can you just go and do your own you know, check? They went in twice, and the check almost complemented what we've observed as a lot of Paris football club. But mm. the unfortunate part is how to make this decision. Yeah. Now, here our supporters are voting for this man to be playing in the mm. uh, cutting cup. Mm. And uh, I was interviewed by one of the radio stations where I could not say, man, I've got a report in front of me. In fact, I was waiting for the final report. Uh, and they said, but why do you remove him because we voted for him? Mm. But I can't just do that because I must get the report of the doctor. Mm. And when the report came, it was devastating. Oh.
Conversation with uh, the chairman of Orlando Pirates, uh, Dr. Ivan Koza here at the Orlando Stadium. And reflecting on so many different aspects of the game, the season, what's to be expected as well, uh, the expectations as well from uh, the fans, the coaching staff, uh, the entire admin of the club uh, coming through in our conversation right now. You kind of hinted at the press conference uh, with the Board of Governors in the week, um, handing over. You were talking about the next generation of leadership uh, within football. Were you somehow hinting that uh, you're going to take a back seat or what do we read in terms of that? Because you wouldn't say it if there was nothing to it. It's only fair that Rob, we prepare people. Yeah. Uh, because the landscape is changing all the time. And sometimes you find people that are ambitious mm. and uh, you don't allow them to start, you know, disrupting the product. And you give them enough time, you know, to start thinking. Uh, if ever they feel that somebody needs to, to take over, uh, you give them ample time. Start looking among themselves to say how you're going to do the transition, the transformation. It should not be abrupt. It must be orderly to make sure that you maintain the momentum. Right. And, and that's why it's very important that, you know, uh, you do it, you know, in a decent way. Uh, you can do it by way of uh, a jest, but you know, at the same time, the message you must be saying, what does it mean? Uh, is it about time? Mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's very important that, you know, uh, we have people who understand what is expected uh, in terms of what has been built. Mm -hmm. Because you remember when I took over, I made certain commitments uh, as a chairman that I want to take the opportunity to take over the patent for my mentor, uh, my teacher, who gave me a space, you know, to be a player in football in the administration at the age of 14. And that, you know, his legacy also uh, is maintained in such a way that he must be proud, wherever he is. And he says to me, when he gave me the first chance, uh, that, you know, there are two things uh, that you, know, you must understand when you get involved in football. Mm. You must con delights and live a laborious life. Mm. Uh, and never allow the spoil of office to corrupt you. Do you see yourself stepping down as chairman soon? When I say soon in terms of the next two years, sooner or later, have you given it any thought? Well, you know, uh, not quite, but at the same time, it was also the realistic role. Yeah. Because sometimes environments, you know, create, you know, uh, some kind of situation that are untenable. Mm -hmm. So don't allow that thing to happen. Because some people, they might measure themselves as being ready. Right. Uh, and they also you allow them to be ready uh, if they think they're ready. Mm -hmm. And because you are not called to say, no, but I don't think you're ready. <laughs> you know, so because when I took over, nobody thought I was ready mm -hmm. to take over. Maybe there might be somebody with a better innovation uh, to come and, you know, take this go to another level. It's only fair. Uh, that you know, uh, you do it you know by hint. Mm -hmm. In the appropriate time, I'll engage you know everybody who respected me and gave an opportunity uh, to lead you know uh, this establishment. But more importantly, Rob, I'm grateful and appreciative mm -hmm. that your own competitors are saying be our chairman. Mm -hmm. So that for me was a challenging, challenging project mm -hmm. that I must not let down this confidence. I must not mislay this confidence of these people because. I know whatever they have is hard and money. Mm. So how do we maximize? How do we say that you know we are a people that can produce a product that is in demand? So it's very important mm. that you know I must acknowledge that you know we are taken by supper that my competition said be our leader, and it, I embrace that with both hands. But we make sure quietly to say, I ask God that to give me the strength and power not to fail mm. So I think that you know the road we have traveled uh, is with positive memories that I can reflect on. It's also very important that you do it at a time where everything is going good uh, and avoid the scramble. So, but I can't just, you know, uh, anoint. You know, yeah. Of course, it's going to be unfair for me to anoint, but there's a very interesting uh, combination of people that uh, I've you know, identified that, you know, given the chance and obviously the state of mind uh, permitting, mm. uh, they can do a good job. Give me three names. No, I can't. Give me three names. No, I can't. Come, Mr. Chairman. No, I've got the two teams, I can't. Th Three names no, of I potential can't. leaders. I, I, I'll be causing a cause of confusion. If you use waiting for years to come, no, I can't. But I know that... You'll allow the process to take... Yes, allow the process to take its <laughs> But in, in my heart of heart, I know there are few people uh, with a gender challenge. Yeah. I'm saying gender challenge. It's a she or a he. Wow. It could be. There are few of them on both sides. There are few of them. Who could? Yeah, there are few of them on both sides.
And, and one of them is the current acting yeah, CEO. Of them in both sides, yeah. in my state, if their state of mind is correct, both sides, there are a few of them. Because it's a very challenging job. Mm. You've got to be selfless. It appears easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. What's the, what's the most challenging part? If, if I have to look, I mean, you, you've spoken about how you've helped the clubs with the negotiations, with the TV rights, with the ability for them to get grants that are, are in the millions now. What, what's the, what, what would you say is the singular most difficult part of your job? Now I'm elevating it to as chairman of the league. Robert, you must understand the business. Yeah. And I give you a challenge to you to ask you most of the club chairmen what business they are in. Mm. But also understand the commercial requirements of your sponsors. How to balance the two. Understand the business that you are in and understand the commercial requirements of the sponsors. Do you believe they committed though? As club chairman, as you say, be in the business of football as opposed to being in other businesses? Well, you can't spend this kind of money if you're not committed. Uh, I think, you know, for them to have shown their hands to be involved in this business, it shows commitment right. because you need to be selfless to be in this business. Because you spend money you don't have sometimes at the expense of your family. And that's why it's a big, big, big challenge. That's why I'm saying that I respect all of them mm. who got involved in the football. And that's why I can tell you it's given a chance to be in this platform I, mm. I'm enjoying now. Mm. They might show one or two things because it takes a man with the guts, uh, this leap of faith, to invest in football. Sometimes you might be joined this, you know, in your assessment uh, to get involved, not knowing the challenge that are facing right. anybody in this guy. And that's why if you are in, you can't come out. <laughs> and that's why, you know, whatever you do, you cannot talk about dividends or profit. All that remains that you get a satisfaction in this experience. Right. I've taken it from the PSL. I'm going to bring it back to Orlando Pirates now, but still a, a, around leadership. If and when you make that decision, who, who do you think, and I know within the family, uh, there's a lot of interest in terms of running the club. There's already uh, a presence as it is. Have you spoken about that? You know, Rob, I said, you know, to my family member, to my friend, that it's nice to give it a warm hand and to yeah. give it a cold hand. Hmm. So therefore, a cold hand, if everything is on in the wheel, you must give whilst you're still alive. Right. To say, show me what you can do. That is training. Just in case. If you decide to do your other things, it's fine, but be part of the training of the preparation, just in case. Mm. Uh, that thing itself is going to decide on its own. Because you cannot just wake up and say you want to get involved in this football. Because I don't care how many degrees we have. Yes. It needs a special kind of passion to be able to understand what is expected of you, mm. uh, what is expected you know, from the people, and what is expected for you to remain relevant uh, to the sponsors, the technical sponsors, uh, to the broadcasting houses. Mm. It takes a very, very well thought out effort to remain relevant in this space. It's not just, yeah. and the more you do it quietly, the better. Uh, because you're able to correct yourself and hit yourself very hard. Mm. But if you are too much you know, in, on the front page, then you might see spooks. <laughs> because this football humbles you. <laughs>